All right, so this is just a video about how to simulate a dice and or card game in Microsoft Excel. Uh, a lot of the skills in this video, I suppose, are going to be transferable to other aspects of Microsoft Excel, but uh, this is specific for 10 specialist combinations and permutations assignment, but I suppose you can use this for whatever you desire. Um, so the first thing we want to do is use the randomize function in Microsoft Excel. So as per usual, whenever we uh, create a, a function in Excel, we need to start with equals, and there's a function called rand between in Microsoft Excel, and inside our brackets, we're going to designate two numbers, uh, one and six for us, because they're the the smallest and largest numbers on our six-sided dice. So we hit enter, and now pretty much whenever we hit delete, so I'm just pressing delete on my keyboard, or you can press down, uh, sorry, you can enter a value and type it and it will randomize the number, but I'm just going to hit delete. Um, and it's going to randomize that number in the cell A1 over and over and over. So that's, first of all, one way we can simulate one dice. Uh, and to simulate maybe four, for example, simply click and drag across with this little uh, square down the bottom right hand side of the cell um, to drag across as many squares as we want. And now that function, rand between 1 comma 6, is in every single one of these cells. So we just hit delete and all four should randomize every single time. Uh, so that's first of all how you randomize your dice. Now let's say, I'm just going to uh, cut and paste these here because I want to be able to say that this is dice 1, this is dice 2, this is dice 3, and this is dice 4 just for the sake of um, visualizing what's happening here. And we're going to say this is roll 1, this is roll 2, and so on. And I'm pretty sure if I highlight that and drag down, it'll say roll 3, roll 4, roll 5, all the way to roll 20. So Microsoft Excel is pretty handy like that. And likewise, I can drag down my simulations here, and we can see that every single time we press delete, all uh, 80 dice are simulating as we go. Now I'll come back to this position soon, but I just want to work with one roll at this point. I'm going to work with four dice, and we're going to start writing some or really just one function, which is going to test and find out what our output of these four dice is, check it and see if there's any win conditions there and display whether or not there is that win condition. So it's easy to start with, in my opinion, the most complex win condition or the most difficult to get, I suppose, and that's all four dice the same, or we might just call it quads. So to do that, uh, we need to say if, so we're going to be using this if function a lot. So if we're going to say all four dice are the same. So in other words, cell B2 is equal to cell B uh, C2, which is equal to, equal to cell D2, which is equal to cell E2. If they're all equal to one another, um, we want it to output true. Otherwise, it's going to output false. So to check whether they're all the same, we need to use an AND function. So we're going to say, after we open the IF bracket, we're going to say, in this logical test that it's asking for, saying, what do you want to check? And we're going to check and use an AND function. We're going to say AND if logical test one is true. So we're gonna say if this cell is equal to this cell, okay? If that's true, um, we're gonna go comma, but it also has to be true that this cell is equal to this cell. And it's also gotta be true that this cell is equal to this cell. And if all of those things are true, so that B2 equals C2, C2 equals D2 and D2 equals E2, if that's true, then all of these four dice are they going to be exactly the same. And then AND will return a true function. It's going to return true. And if it returns true, so if this function is true, in our if statement, we want to say, well, if that's true, we want to output the um, statement quads. So that's going to be the output if it is true. Otherwise, and you'll notice that these um, commands down here are telling you what to write. So when I got up to my value if true, I wrote what it was. Be sure that you include these quotation marks because otherwise it's going to treat it like it's a function and it won't understand that you're trying to output the word quads. And at the end, value of false will just say no result or something like that. You can call it whatever you'd like. Make sure you close your bracket for your if function and we're going to hit enter. And you'll notice we've got three, five, three, and four, so not quads, so we get no result. Um, it's going to take me quite a while to get quads if I'm just simulating one dice over and over and over. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag these dice down maybe 20 spots roughly and I'm also going to drag my function down 20 spots and you'll notice I get no quads no quads no quads no quads but sooner or later 
my four dice, as in cell number 12, um, I've got four twos here, two, 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 two. And because these two are equal, and these two are equal, and these two are equal, I've got quads, and it's going to return quads. So that's uh, a good start. Um, and that, that uh, yeah, it's a good start, but I also want to be able to uh, identify maybe if I get a double, okay? Or maybe if I get a triple somewhere along the line, I'm just having a quick look. I can't really see a triple. There's probably one there, but I can't see it. Uh, in row 20, we've got two pairs. We've got two fives and two sixes. Um, we've got a single pair here in two fours. We've got two ones in this one. Uh, but we're looking for, maybe we'll do trips next. Uh, and in the interest of not uh, giving you all the answers, if you're doing a four dice game, I will leave it at this. But the skills that I'm about to show you for this particular um, function uh, are going to be transferable to adding two pairs. Um, it's also going to be uh, transferable for adding just a single pair and so on. So the skill that I'm talking about in this instance is if I have trips, I'm either going to have the first three dice are the same and this dice will be different, or I'm going to have these three dice the same and the first one will be different. So they're the, uh, or I'm going to have the first, third and fourth die, first, second and third die, um, and they're the only options for my trips. So what I'm going to have to do here is going to have to, after I check, so my, uh, my, my function at the moment is checking if it's quads, and if it's not, is simply outputting no result. I don't want that. I want to do a secondary check. So instead of outputting no results straight away, I'm going to say another if. I'm going to say if. And this time I'm checking uh, if some version of trips occurs in my game, then I'm going to output trips. Otherwise, I'm going to output no result again. So what I've got to check is all the different permutations of trips. So I'm going to say if, in this case, I'm not going to use an and function. I'm going to use an or function because if any of them are true, it should output true. They all don't have to be true in this instance. So if or, this is my or function, if b2 equals c2, um, equals c2, which equals d2, that's my first logical test. So if all those three are equal, um, in fact, I'm not, let me, and this is, um, I'm glad that this is, I've just come to a, I suppose, epiphany here, um, because this is what using Microsoft Excel is all about. I said in class the other day that I am no, by no means an expert in Microsoft Excel, um, but what I have learned over the years is that if you run into a problem or you have a question or you're trying to create a model of some sort and you don't know how to proceed, um, feel free to use Google or some, uh, I guess, just general investigation um, to solve your problem. So the problem I've just come across is, I wonder if I can say, um, if, I'm going to test this, it may not work. I'm going to say if, instead of using that AND function, if, I'm just going to say if, b2 equals c2, which equals d, uh, d2, which equals e2. I'm going to see if that can work instead of using an AND function here. So I'm going to, again, simulate maybe 20 dice to try and get quads much faster uh, and see if it's going to work here. So quickly going through, hopefully going to get a quads. And I'm also keeping an eye out to just see um, if I can see quads and it says no result. I'm hoping quads will come up but there's every chance that I've permutated through a set of quads and I haven't even noticed because my function's not working. Um, one way to test rather than testing, wouldn't it, is to go, instead of using these as random, I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops, <laughs> I want 1s, don't I? Okay, so now that's checking and it's not displaying quads. Okay, so my, my uh, thought process has failed, which is fine because that's what investigation is all about. Um, so I'm just going to command Z a bit so that my function remains as it was. And I realize now that that is not going to work. So I'm going to use my AND function again, um, which means that when I'm editing this function to check whether there's trips, I'm going to be doing it the long way, which is okay. Um, so I want to be checking OR. I'm going to be checking if, if any of these things are true, 
then it will display trips. Okay, so I want to say if, and I'm going to have to use an and function, I think, in here, because I'm going to have to go if and, if and this equals this, so if these two are equal, comma, these two are equal, okay, so in other words, if the first three dice are equal, this and part, and I know this is a very, very nested if statement, and it's getting very confusing, but I'll try and explain it as we go. So if uh, these first three dice are equal, and will be true, and within the or statement, if this bit is true, it will return true for the or statement. But within this or statement, I'm going to have multiple ands. So that's my logical test one, but I'm going to go comma and enter a logical test two. And again, this is going to be an and function. If uh, C2 equals D2, comma, D2 equals E2, close my and function. Uh, so now we're saying if the last three dice are equal, this and function will return true, and the or function will return true, and we can output trips. Uh, it's not my only two ways to get trips, however. I've got to make a third logical test in this or loop. And my third logical test is going to be if the first two are equal, but also check if the second and last dice are equal. That'll also be trips 1, 2, and 4, and that's going to return true, hopefully, in some instances. Uh, logical test 4 is going to be another AND, and it's going to be testing if 1 is equal to 3, and if 3 is equal to 4. We're going to close that AND loop. And so we've got four logical tests now. We have 1, 2, and 3 being equal, 2, 3, and 4 being equal, 1, 3, and 4 being equal, and 1, 2, and 4 being equal. And as far as I can tell right now at this moment, there's no other way to get trips. So those are our four logical tests. And one, and two, and three, and four. And closing now my all loop. So this is the first bracket for my all loop, and this is the last bracket for my all loop. So if any of those and tests are true, or in other words, if we have trips at all, uh, that or function over here is going to return true. And so if that or function returns true, we need to return the value trips. If it's not, I'm going to say no result again. Okay, and we have therefore closed our um, if loop here, but the last bracket is not for that. The last bracket is for the whole if function, and if we're correct, we'll hit enter. Okay, so now we've got now that was a lot of work, and you can see that we've only got we've only got two tests here. We're testing for quads and we're testing for trips. But there's multiple ways um, to get more than just those things. You could test for four consecutive numbers. You could test for two pairs. Uh, you could test for just a single pair somewhere. You could set uh, test for descending numbers in a sequence. There's lots of things you could do. And what you're essentially doing is every time you want to add a check, instead of this no result at the end, you're going to be um, checking something else. And within that if function, so if I made a new if function for... Uh, two pairs, I would put in a bunch of functions like ands and ors to check if there's two pairs. And at the end of that if, the one I've just created, I would enter no result. So we're basically going to check the least likely thing, quads, then check the ne next least likely thing, which is trips, then check the next least likely thing, which is two pair and so on all the way down. But in this case, um, I'm just going to check two things. I'm going to check for quads and I'm going to check for trips. I'm going to hit enter. So that's two pair there, but I haven't checked for that, so it outputs no result, of course. Um, two, we've just got a single pair of fours, uh, four different numbers, and here we go. It's our first instance of trips, and nice. We have a two here, a two here, and a two here, and because we've checked for that, that check, by the way, is our check for one, two, and four, which is, uh, I believe, B2 equals, no, uh, yes, B2 equals C2, that's these two, and C2 equals E2. So this AND, in this instance where we have 2252, two, this AND function has returned true. This one has returned false, this one's returned false, and this one has returned false, but because we have one returning true, all you need is one for the OR function to say, yes, one of those is true. And because one of them is true, the OR function within this 
if has said return trips please and we get the value trips to be returned and if we go again none of those quad quads or trip conditions have been met in this one so we get no result and on and on we go and um, as I mentioned at the very beginning we're going to come back to um, this setup where I had a bunch of rolls down the side let's go 30 rolls and we're going to copy all this across go all the way down and simulate a lot at the same time so instead of hitting delete over and over and over maybe 200 times to get 200 results we can do it seven times with 30 of them and see what our results are so in the first 30 we had no quads and we had one trips the first three fours here we'll hit delete again we got quads on the bottom we got four fours and here we've got the last three numbers were fours so we have trips here hit delete again we get trips trips and trips no quads hit and we get nothing no trips nor quads hit delete again one set of trips one set of trips we have three sets of trips and one quad twos here and so on so um, now this video is longer than I intended it to be but I suppose that's uh, hopefully useful uh, if you're using cards instead of dice, uh, it simply means that when you randomize, um, rand between, you're just going to have to go to, from 1 to 52. This is the simplest way. And you might have to create a list. Okay, so if you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. down to 52, I'm going to run out of space here, so I might have to zoom out a little bit. But if you do that down to 52 cards, that will be all of your possibilities. I hope this is visible in the video. I've got 52 cards here and you might literally have to go ace of hearts, two of hearts, three of hearts, four of hearts, and so on um, until you've got all 52 cards assigned to a number. And if you randomize this eight, this is gonna be the eight of hearts. And when you randomize the 19, we've got nine, 10, jack, queen, king of hearts and we might say this is the ace of spades and the two of spades and oops two of spades and the three of spades and the four of spades and the five of spades and finally the six of spades so when that was 19 it's changing every time but when it was 19 that would indicate that that was the six of spades so what that means is if you're using cards it's a lot harder it's a lot more time consuming anyway at the very least maybe not harder but it is more time consuming to use microsoft excel for simulation you might find a better simulating tool online somewhere but at some point you have to simulate your game so uh, just figure out what is going to work for you but this video was intended to be so that you can at least get an understanding of simulating your game in microsoft excel whether it's dice whether it's cards or whether it's cards and dice combined or some other element that i don't know that we're doing um, whatever it is, these are the skills you need to use. You're going to need to be using uh, if functions and and or logical operators all um, in conjunction to find a uh, to find what result you get when you roll your th or simulate your two, three, four, five dice, whatever it is, or five cards or three cards or whatever you're simulating. Um, I also want to point out just briefly before I finish that this looks super complicated when you just look at it oops excuse me when you just look at this function up the top as it is by itself it looks really complicated but i'm hoping if you took the time to go through this video even if you had to pause and go back a few times to understand uh, one of the steps hopefully you followed the logic as we went and hopefully now you realize that yes it is it is very confusing if you just look at it but when you're building it from the ground up, reminder, we just started with one check and we said quads or no result. Um, when you're building it from the ground up, you start, in, start internalizing what's going on. And even if your function ends up being, you know, like up to my cursor on the right here, if it ends up being this long, if you build it from the ground up, you're going to understand what it's doing. And it's going to give you a really good simulation and a lot to talk about in your evaluate and to verify section. Okay, but I noticed this video is getting just near the 20 minute mark, so I am going to stop now for your sake and mine. Uh, I hope this helped, and if you have any more questions, feel free to see me in class.